MLP Digital Paint. Join me August 29th for a free virtual paint lesson, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Live. Bring a pre-painted canvas painted in aqua color. Our painting will already be a third of the way done and your normal paint supplies. Last week on Instagram, we studied seven different topics to prepare us for this painting. What happens to our body when we see something that visually pleases us? For one, our eyes dilate. The enlargement of our pupils wants to absorb all colors, shapes, and dimensions that bring us into that world. The shutter speed of our eyes and knowing how it works can help a painter control depth perception. The main interest is the focal point and should be crisp with detail. Manipulating the focal point can direct the viewer to our intentions as artists, but we want the viewer to walk away gratified. an article in Incorporated Magazine by Jonathan Lacoste in March 12th, 2015, and I quote, anyone who has built a successful business will tell you that their business decisions are often balancing art and the sciences. He compares the consumer to the artist in the following ways. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Continually step back and look at the whole picture. Pursue perfection and critics are fickle. Keep your eyes on the page. Successful artists aren't always original artists. People notice mistakes. Seek out inspiration. Your studio is your work. When harmony is achieved through these lessons, we have obtained gratification. states that offices decorated with pictures are 17% more productive than those with barren walls. University of Exeter Dr. Craig Knight states that employees working in offices with art are 15% quicker. So you do the math. But why are we only worried about productivity in the workforce? What about our homes? Of course, many people stay busy decorating and redecorating their homes, but is this really productive? Creating a sanctuary with that perfect piece could lead us to be productive in our own personal journey. There are lots of studies that tell us that creating art can help us with our concentration, but what about viewing it? Our lives are fragmented and we view lots of images quickly during the day. But have you really just sat still with a painting and tried to get the most meaning out of it? An artist can spend months on their creation only for us to give it a quick scroll. I inevitably find new things to look at when I spend time with the painting, or even the next day, take a look at it with a fresh look. Sometimes the art of concentration is just having patience and allowing yourself time to absorb. Being in awe boosts our health. When touched by the beauty of nature, art and spirituality, our cytokines are lowered. These are proteins that signal our body to work harder. Cytokines are associated with poor health, specifically type 2 diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and clinical depression. Taking into account a healthy diet, it may also be why artists who do not pursue sports vigorously also appear vibrant in their later years. We could potentially use this as an argument as to why we should support the arts, nature, and philosophy in our schools. We all know what a brain break is. That little 
30 seconds we use to relax our mind after intense focus. That moment when we check into social media to look at other people's worlds and get away from ours. Did you know there are several apps you can download to learn about our national parks? Maybe use these as your brain break. It could be a healthier option to learn about something in your area, something you could plan, something you could visit, something that would lower your cytokines. I hope you've enjoyed our journey this week, learning how to de-stress through art and nature. Take a little time for yourself and enjoy the nature.